Celtics uh, winning the 18th championship, uh, we had the death of arguably the patriarch of the NBA at this point. Man, that's on the logo. Jerry West, a guy that uh, has kind of shaped how many of us watch basketball and the greatness behind it for the last 50 years. Um, This was, uh, you know, always on the way. He was 86 years old, lived a full life, um, went through a lot in his life, a lot of losing to said Celtics, which caused, you know, him to have a lot of depression, but he, he, he figured out how to make up for it. Um, kind of like with, with his ability to be a mentor, to scout talent, to put teams together that have defined the NBA. Uh, and a lot yeah. of it, you know, has come from Jerry West. And I, I, I don't know if people know how good Jerry West was as a basketball player, but man, Not at this point, there's, no. there's plenty like of stuff to talk about with his, you know, his relationships to every star player that has come after him, but a little bit about his career. Um, he, you know, obviously was a star in the 1950s for, uh, West Virginia, uh, shout out my man, Howard Schilling. Uh, that's his alma mater as well. Um, and I believe he got them to he either won a national championship or he got them to the title game. Um, and he was like a superstar there essentially. Yeah. And I think I'm the two final fours. Yeah. Like, and he, um, essentially, you know, he went to the 1960 Olympics with Oscar Robertson, uh, him and Oscar Robertson are the best guards of the sixties. And Jerry West was an otherworldly player. Um, somebody who <laughs> a lot of people looked at Jerry West and, you know, throughout the sixties and you see like the, the, the color of the league is changing uh, from the 1950s as far as like, you know, there's a lot more black players uh, being drafted, built around becoming stars. And Jerry West was, was so cold. Everybody accepted Jerry West just as, as he was. And it was like, Hey man, you can talk about a lot of people. You can't talk about Jerry West because Jerry West is a bad motherfucker on offense, defense, Athletically, uh, one of the great defenders to ever live, uh, for, from all accounts. To ever live too. One of one of the great, you know, uh, as you mentioned, shooters, clutch players, uh, and spent his career going up against, you know, a dynasty that had Hall of Famers coming off the bench. So naturally, I think that would drive anybody into, um, you know, some kind of, uh, you know bad feelings and, and spirits about themselves considering their own abilities um, through no fault of his own. You know, Jerry West used to go crazy. There's a, you know, a famous Charles Barkley phrase. Uh, there was sometimes it's showing what LeBron was doing in the playoffs or, you know, how it, it compared historically. And all of a sudden you see like these, these graphics and it's just like Jerry West, Jerry West, Jerry West, Jerry West, averaging 40 points in playoff series. And it's like, God damn Jerry West. So like, um, this guy was, uh, you know, someone that the greatness of the Los Angeles Lakers is largely built on him as a player, as a coach, as an executive, as a consultant. I'm, I would make the argument that except for this last most recent championship, he is solely responsible for – he's the only person that's involved in all of it. Like, because he was – I mean, he was around before Jerry Buss – Bought the Lakers from uh, the Cooks. Yep. So it's it's Jerry West and Elgin, right? And then Wilt, and then he's coaching, and then he's the GM, and then he's has Kareem, and he has Magic. Then he, you know, then he has the '90s post Magic. Then he gets he convinces Shaq to come to LA. He drafts Kobe, and you know. And basically realized it before everybody else. Like, yo, he's going to be really fucking good. Let's get him to shut all this shit down and then we'll trade for him. And that happens. And then, you know, the uh, the whole Kobe era. Like, all of that is, that's that's a 40-year span of time. And then, like, you know, he's behind the Warriors. Um, yeah, and, then, and, then, <laughs> and then, like, the time that, and then, like, the time where he's not that, like, he then is a consultant for the Warriors and, like, puts basically tells them, like, if you trade, Clay Thompson for Kevin Love, I will quit this position. And that convinces them to not make the trade, and that leads to four rings. 
Man, uh, uh, Seth Rich Rogan set up the mid two thousands Grizzly teams. Yeah, that's another thing he yes. did. Um, yes, they, and if they, and if they, you know, if they had got the first pick, they would have had LeBron. And I'm, and you know, also, you know, he's a person that pulls Hubie Brown out of mothballs as a coach. Yeah, um, I, I saw the news of him dying. I was just, I just got sad, and um, you know, we received word that Willie Mays had, had passed away right before you know One Nation Radio went live. So I, I didn't have as much time to prepare for Willie Mays, but this is also in you know the death of Bill Walton happened as well. Somebody else who you know I just did, we didn't get a chance to discuss. Uh, but these are like sports heroes, which you know, and are in turn like American heroes um, that have, you know, influenced how we take in these games that, that we love. And um, Jerry West is Mr. Laker logo of the league um, went in the hall of fame in the, in the mid seventies, obviously um, appeared in nine NBA finals, I believe. Um Yeah. And it's just like <laughs> the only person that ever has and probably ever will win finals MVP on a losing team. And I watched the second half of that 69 finals on YouTube one time. Um, and there's Bill Russell in his last NBA game, riding off in the sunset with his 11th title. There's Wilt Chamberlain on that floor. There's, there's Elgin Baylor on that floor. There's John Havlicek on that floor. And you're watching that second half. You're like, Jerry West is so clearly the best basketball player on the floor. With, you know, the people I just named are all top 20 all-time basketball players as right. far as best careers ever. And he's he's fucking killing. Like, he, he they lost that game by, I think, three points. He had, 40, he had a 40-point triple-double. That's what we're talking about. Like, when we talk, when you look up some historic uh, accomplishment in an NBA game, in the NBA playoffs, the names you always see ring off. You always see LeBron. You always see Jordan. You always see Shaq, especially Shaq in the play, especially Shaq in the finals. You see uh, Kareem and you see Wilt. Those are names you always see when it's some. This hasn't been done since since so and so. It always goes back to those guys as far as like pro, the pro, prolific all time like playoff performances. Um, and like he was somebody that while I did not watch, he was somebody I was fond of through the history of the sport. And I'm glad that I like followed and and knew some of the, some of the crazy stories he had, because like he was somebody that he would do media and he didn't, he would say what he felt is very similar to Riley, which is kind of funny because they both played together. Yeah. Um, and he would be like, he would give you a level because he, because he's old school. He came from the era where like you could say what you wanted without it becoming a fucking maelstrom of drama um that like he would just give you candid candidness that you know on or off the record that you just would not expect to give you a level of honesty and like i've never read his autobiography but like it's on the way and like i didn't want to read i didn't i stayed away from reading for so long because like i've always heard people talk about like it's almost jarring how low his perception of himself was and how he considered himself such a failure even though he's one of the 10 to 15 greatest basketball players of all time because of the finals losses. Even though his, you look at the game logs, you're like, well, you didn't lose because you, you didn't lose because <laughs> Elgin didn't lose because of Elgin either. It was because you were out gunned. Um, yeah. And like, it, it, and so I, I never want to read because I didn't want to suppress and read. But like when he would do interviews, I would always, you know, listen. And I would, I, he's one of those guys that's from the air. Like you would hear, you know, not not Russell. Russell would be, you know, he'd always be, uh, what's the word? He'd be diplomatic towards, like, the, the future generations past him, right? Mm-hmm. Even encouraging. Mostly encouraging. I wouldn't even say just diplomatic. But you would hear guys like Oscar and Wilt, and they talk about, like, the guys that are, you know, guys from the 90s couldn't hang with guys from the 60s. I'm like, get, get the fuck out of here. Like, I got, You know I can see Bob Cousy on this, on this film not be able to dribble with his left hand at all, right? <laughs> You realize that you guys are set shooting, right? You realize you guys are playing below the rim, all of you, except for like three guys. Yeah. Except for it's, it's Elgin, it's Elgin, it's Will, it's Russell, everybody's playing below the rim, right? So, so anyway, um, but the thing about, and I think this is the reason why I became such an all time great executive was like, he saw the game, where it was going, where it was, in like what it could possibly be. And he also wasn't, a, he just wasn't a hater. Like, he never, he never was so, so concerned about what someone, 
couldn't do or what they couldn't do compared to the time that he was his time it was like nah this is what the game is now and like let's see and i can see he can see these things in like one of my favorite things in you know it's probably the early 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 2010s was like he had built he had um bill simmons had him on i think he's still at see spending time and he was talking about um lebron he was saying like look man all the shit and all the stupid stuff and these stupid fucking talk shows and the debates about his greatness like no He's one. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all time right now, and he's probably he he has possibly end up as the greatest. And for me, hearing that as somebody that, that drafted Kobe was at times a father figure in Kobe's life. For him to say that, I was like, I'm. Thank you that I don't have to hear this from fucking idiots that don't know what they're talking about in the sense of making it a belittling. You know the accomplishments of somebody because they're 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 still going as opposed to waiting till they're done and then give them their flowers. Um, and I, you know, I felt like that was a lot of the stuff you know that pissed me off at the time. You know, watching a Shaq's career or watching Kobe's career or watching LeBron's career is like, no man, look at their age, look what they've accomplished, look what the rest of, you know, barring some type of injury or some type of incident, look what look where they're headed. Can we just say like, hey, they're we think they're on pace to do to be an all time great, or do we need to just say, oh, he's not, my, oh, they're not Michael Jordan, you know? Because I didn't have a, I didn't have the fucking wings post poster of 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 Shaq or something like. I just <laughs> so it used, to, it used to bother me all the time. Be like, y'all don't do you not see where this is going? And you know, we talk about this all the time with like the Cleveland thing, right? It was like maybe in the nineties, players come to Cleveland to play with LeBron when he's in his twenties because they recognize what's happening, right? But they don't, but like players overwhelmingly didn't ever want to come to Cleveland. It's like, do y'all not know where this is headed? How am I seeing this as a, a teenager and y'all are in the league and don't, and don't recognize it? Oh, the 30 point triple levels never didn't? No, no, no. I understand Cleveland stinks, but it's a bunch of other small market areas you don't want, also don't want to play in either. So, like, what there's a max slot, take the max slot and be on a winning team. So, it used to bother me so much, and then like, uh, so. I just appreciate it. I mean, like, you know, I told you, I've told all of y'all, like, over the years, like, when it came to post Kobe's death, like, anything involving Kobe, I just, I can't, I haven't watched it. I can't watch it. I can't bring myself to watch it. The most I've gotten is seeing the unveiling of his, of his uh, statue um, outside of Staples. That's going to be outside of Staples. And um, seeing Jerry West talk, like, basically in tears, talking about, like, what Kobe meant to him. And that that broke me. And that's another one of the reasons why I can't watch take myself to watch some of that stuff. So, yeah, um, I always had a great appreciation for him, and I'm and he's going to be greatly missed by this league because he's, I mean, he's one of the most instrumental people ever. And yeah. like, you know, all time competitor uh, yeah. had a great quote. You know, people talk about you know their dogs and stuff like that. He's like, well, I was a wolf. I ate dogs, and it was it was just like. No one could describe Jerry West uh, better than himself in that moment. And, um, you know, just think about it being like, you know, as the league is becoming blacker in the 60s and 70s, this white man is anointed, is anointed as the logo, right? Yep. And it's fine. I think yep. that says a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, just look at – just go back up, and look at some of yeah, Think of all these decades, you've never heard a single word about nothing crazy coming out of Jerry West's mouth. Right, right. Um, and I, I think it was, you know, to look at Jerry West's game logs and stuff, they're just just eye-popping numbers in, in playoff games and uh, just, just, just an all-time, all-time player and executive. And uh, I – He's going to be missed, like not seeing him yeah. just just hanging around, like, you know, uh, seeing like a new interview pop up or, uh, you know, he was working for the Clippers uh, right yep. now, you know, before he died yep. and uh, just not seeing like, you know, not hearing any more stories about some player that he just flat out rejected. Be like, hey, man, get them out of here. They don't they don't get it. They'll never fucking get it. Um, just different stuff like that. Um, so. Always was a big fan of Jerry West, and I remember when he left the Lakers too. I was confused uh, with a lot of that yeah. stuff, but um, some of the stuff like that was happening was, you know, a lot of the the he he was not a fan of you know mixing with with the Phil Jackson yep. stuff with the Bus family, mm -hmm. and uh, just felt very underappreciated by the Lakers, you know, for everything that he did. And I think it's sad that the Lakers never really kind of fixed that relationship. 
um, you know, you know, with Jerry West because, like, you know, Jerry West never walks through those fucking doors. This entire league is different. Fuck the Lakers, like, as a, yeah. you know, as a, as a team and a as franchise. A team, like, draft them. like, as a team, they're moving to Los Angeles. Right. This man literally establishes the West Coast as a region for the NBA. Yeah. As the signature player, him and Elgin Baylor. Yep. Yep. Like, I like, and I think it's you know I think the Lakers need to go above and beyond in his death to uh, you know and they put out like a like a press release and it they need to they need to reconsider everything they're doing to honor Jerry West. I know he has a statue. Give him another one. Like <laughs> like I know he, I know he has his jersey retired. Like I know I know he's you know whatever. Like fig- figure something out. Do a Jerry West night. You know, yeah. do something like, like collaborate with the league on it. Like figure figure out how you are going to honor Jerry. Produce some like documentaries with like current players talking about him and being like, "Yo, the Los Angeles Lakers stamp this and, and put it out." Yeah. Like I imagine, they get he gets the black bar on the jersey this uh, this coming season, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like he gets a or or he gets a forty four on there. Yeah, some, some, either one. Yeah. yeah. Hell, the league should put forty four on there. Like, <laughs> wouldn't bother me. It, like, look, you made it real. You make it real easy on the logo. Yeah. On the logo on the floor, put the forty four in the uh, in the corner, in inside the inside the silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I I don't have any more uh, on Jerry West, but uh, rest in peace to the great Jerry West. 